heavy lifting here and call the subcommittee to order. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and or transcribed. Nellie could start the recording. Yep, all set there, thank you. Okay. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, attendance, what we have, um, you know, right, right this minute, uh, we have uh, uh, Julie Hilbert. Yep. Uh, Bryn Hare. Uh, Bryn is not here, but Nellie is. Oh, okay. It must be Nellie. I can. I only have a partial picture there. Um, uh, Ingrid Jonas. Here. And uh, uh, Danica. I'm here. And myself. Okay. Well, it's a it's a uh, it's a big agenda um, today, but there are a lot of the slides uh, are introductory slides or um, sort of wrap up reference kind of slides for you. But uh, uh, Danica, if you want to walk through the the, uh, the your your train of thought here, and uh, but, but first let me let me just say, uh, do we have any uh, public comments that we need to? Uh, Reference. I know there's one in the uh, in the uh, yes. slide deck, so maybe sure. we can deal deal with the substance of it when we get there. Absolutely, or now, whichever you prefer. All right. Well, it's a, I guess it's a it's part of our routine here to to uh, Great. address that at the beginning. Sure. We'll go ahead and jump to public comments because there we can't approve any minutes, of course, um, without a, a forum, which we don't currently have. But what I wanted to do was share uh, public comments that we received via Tim Wessel, um, where a gentleman um, read about him being on this public health committee and wanted to share his concerns with packaging and labeling, which um, he did and provided some, uh, a, a, a package um, of chocolate that I don't have an exact size on, but by, based on the font size, I would say it's a rather large package because you can read the font on there. Um, but he expressed concerns that a child might um, mistake this for candy or chocolate, and so that's important. He said symbology is important, but so is the overall graphic design of the words and graphics. And he asked that you know we take a look at this and, and consider it. Um, he said the word cannabis infused are very small and sideways while the very attractive milk chocolate drops is big and bold. Um, back has a ton of small print and a few symbols, but nothing that can compete for a child's attention. Um, he said he didn't know how to address the problem, but that is most definitely something for us to consider and talk about other than um, by requiring the package warning to be bigger than anything else. It's a thorny issue and he wishes us well. So. Um, I would say, again, based on the fact that I can see the font size here and can read things, it's, it's definitely a larger package than some of the examples that you are going to see um, throughout. And as I mentioned to everyone on the call today, um, I have sent you this in PDF format. If it's easier for you to pull it up on your own screen and look at it in that capacity. Um, before we move on, uh, Julie, do we have any members of the public with us today? Uh, yes, we have six members of the public and one member of the, or two members of the local press. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, so from there, we will uh, go in and remind um, everyone that you may submit public comments via the CCB website, and this is how you do it uh, on the public input form and we will move forward. So this hasn't changed our key requirements. We're moving into packaging and labeling rules and guidelines now. Uh, there are many more things besides the bigger cannabis symbol, dates and shelf life and warning labels that you'll be able to note today that we can certainly move into that. And what was important to us, because we had been working so much on advertising and I'm not going to go through all of these, um, but what was important is that uh, Act 164 is very clear on some key items that will help us in uh, labeling. Um, the first being that not no cannabis product, and this is for um,
sitting right next to the frozen. She must be, uh, yeah, must be frozen. Oh, you good. I'm here. Can can anybody hear me now? I was worried about a technical challenge this morning. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you now. But uh, we didn't hear uh, your previous paragraph. No worries. No worries. Um, so that um, it's labeled in a manner that states the number of servings and measured in servings of a maximum of five milligrams per serving. Um, manufactured with the, the date that the product is manufactured, the product is best used by the ingredients, the information on the length of time it typically takes for product to take effect, and appropriate warnings developed uh, by the board in consultation with the Department of Health. Uh, requires that we have a clearly identifiable standard symbol adopted um, as, as well by the board. Um, and then of course cannabis testing, which um, would be done and then requirements for an opaque child resistant packaging. Um, a couple of other things that are important to note that if they sell hemp or hemp products that they are clearly labeled as such and separately from cannabis and cannabis products and again in rules requirements of child resistant opaque packaging um, at the point of sale. And then in rule making it, it states this again. So I'll move these slides to the back for Thursday and we'll have a quick list. Um, and I think that will help. So because we do have Dr. Levine here, uh, I'm going to go back to the beginning. Um, Mark, if you would like to, um, if there's any additional business we need to do or we can do this on Thursday. Sure, well we do have the uh, September 13 uh, meeting minutes to approve. Yeah. And uh, if you had a chance to look at them and, and uh, can have a motion to approve, that would be excellent. Yeah, sorry, I'm late, and I can make that motion. I can second. Thank okay. you. All in favor? Aye. Okay, then the, then the uh, minutes of the, uh, the 16th. 13. Huh? The, the 13th. Oh, we just approved the minutes of the 13th. Of, yeah, and we the didn't. The 16th, there were no there were no minutes because there was no quorum, right? And we have uh, minutes from uh, we are in preparation. There are minutes from uh, last Thursday, uh, and we will send those around for your review. So before we move forward, Julie and and the CCB, is there anything you'd like to say before we get into packaging and labeling? for the subcommittee? Um, yeah, I just wanted to, to call everyone's attention to the meeting that's on Wednesday, our advisory committee meeting. And if there are things today that this group can get, uh, you know, 75 or 80% comfortable with so that we can get some feedback from that larger advisory committee group on Wednesday, I think that would be great. Um, you know, I see this as sort of a looping or cyclical process versus a linear process, meaning that once you all have, you know, a thought about something that you're you're fairly comfortable with, you know, we have the opportunity to send it to Dr. Levine's office, which he's offered, and then also to our advisory committee, and then the CCB will discuss it as well. So, if there are some things that we can get some signaling on that you've got 75% to 80% comfortable with today, so that we can talk about them on Wednesday with the larger group, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to move over. Dr. Levine, um, in the deck, which you should have in your email, um, I won't go through the public comment again, but we did receive one, and I believe you've seen this on, um, uh, or you have received it from Tim Wessel. So I did want to put that out there. We did just talk about that. And I'm going to move past. And we'll go into package examples. And we have a three-state opportunity to look at different packages um, in here. So I'm going to talk about real quick the common types of cannabis packaging, glass jars and bottles, resealable containers, silicone jars, tin containers, plastic vials, mylar bags, vape cartridges, and then a free roll or, or a free roll for a blunt. Um, we do have examples of a good portion of these um, with the exception of um, uh, concentrates, but we can talk about that as we go through um, on the packaging. 
So we, from from the NACB's packaging and labeling guidelines, um, we put out some of these requirements, which also go back and, and for the most part match what's in 164. We'll ensure that that is um, that those two match um, it, up just to be safe. Um, but again, child resistant certifi certification of uh, child resistant packaging, or if which it is required. So. Um, we, that can, we can move on from there. Um, and the edibles and, and what we all know, five milligrams per piece, 50 milligrams in total, that is also in the statute. And so we'll give a recap of that. Uh, exit packages, how it leaves the building. Again, this is particularly important for minors. Um, the packaging labels that, um, layers, I'm sorry, that they comply with um, whatever the CCB final cannabis promotion guidelines for advertising, marketing, branding, and logos are. The product ID, the warning symbol, the warning statement. Um, then also to ensure that there are no prohibitions on any of the packaging, false or misleading information. Um, child appeal prevention and health and medical and disease claims. And again, we are speaking about recreation cannabis here. Um, the product facts, which would include the ingredients, how, when, and where it was made, allergen warnings, edibles, um, the serving size, THC content, flour, as well, product instructions, and tamper evidence packaging. Um, I will go back and note that I will add the date of manufacture and the date um, goodbye to the product facts piece to ensure that it is captured. You know, this is something that we've uh, discussed uh, a couple of times in recent meetings that uh, we will have, and we do have, a this, this same information in a checklist that can be used by uh, CCB uh, staff to to review pack <coughs> review packaging uh, standards as well as it could be used by uh, cannabis operators to review uh, their own compliance with the rules. So this is a California. Um, cannabis infused uh, packet of edibles. They um, are also five milligrams of THC per piece and this package is really two servings. What I did was break this down to the anatomy of a package to show where the warning is and the instructions. And of the three states that we have, they are the one state that definitely has instructions um, on how to use the product. And then also how long to wait. So they do have that. They have an ingredient list. They have a nutritional fact, manufacture date, package date, expiration date, and then of course a secondary warning. They have a secondary. They have two symbols actually. One on the front for cannabis and one on the back um, for cancer and reproductive harm. And of course California's um, Proposition 65 warnings that are pretty much so on every single product that is in California. Um, period. Regardless of what it is. So, are there any questions on this before I move to the next? So, so I see where you are in the deck, but am I supposed to be seeing something on a shared screen as well, or not? Because I'm not seeing anything except you guys. Um, yes, you should, but that is page 16, which is why I sent this out to make sure the Teams has been a slight bit glitchy in the last few days. Um, I had yeah. I had something similar last night. So we are on page 16, Dr. Levine, and I'll make sure to note each page as we go through. Okay. Fantastic. Um, any questions or comments on the California label for this particular um, package? No. Um, go ahead, Ingrid. No, I, I'm just oh. taking it in and I don't have a question. Okay. One thing I will note about this, and it, it, I, to the naked eye um, visibility, this does not also appear to be a resealable package. This particular one, I can't see a bump at the top. Um, and I don't have an indication of how large it is, um, but I will say that it's more than likely is a three to four inch range, um, just comparing it to others. Okay. Dr. Levine, we're going to page 17. So this is a sealed box that this particular one contained a glass jar of cannabis flour. And why this is important in here is this could also be used for concentrate because of the size of the vial or the um, the jar that it might go in. So it, it, it's a cube, 
which gives the opportunity to post warnings. Then you can see that this has, you know, very much the same stuff that was on the last page, with the exception of I don't know if there were instructions. But again, this is this is flower. Any questions on this? Danica, I have uh, one thing to point out, which is the the, the brand name here, Durban Poison. <laughs> um, is, uh, is there anything uh, you know? Is that raising uh, anybody's antenna? I'm not, I'm not sure whether that's any of our business, but uh, maybe it is. I wouldn't want to buy anything like that unless <laughs> I was putting it on my reeds or something. <laughs> Very fair statement. I think that what is, and what is being said here, I think, is incredibly impactful to the development of the promotional guidelines for advertising, branding, marketing, and logos, because I think that is an important element. You, you know, basically state what shouldn't be there. Um, so that is something for us all to consider. I'm going to move to slide 18. And on 18. Can I just add sure. one more thing? Um, is it peculiar, peculiar to just California that they have the cancer and reproductive warnings? It is. Proposition 65 is a California warning. I'll give you a quick example. Um, they have those warnings up in hotel lobbies. It basically also states that um, this, that whatever this is, has been known by the state of California to cause cancer. Um, we could, I could send you a copy of Proposition 65, but it's pretty much so everywhere you go in California, you will see it, and you'll see it um, in environments, on packages, everywhere. So it is, it is a California. Um, yeah. California. There's, there's nothing in Vermont legislation that has anything close to that, right? For I have seen. It does not mean that we cannot investigate that. Julie, do you um, do you have any insight as it relates to uh, cannabis? I, I don't, but I'm happy to check. Okay, thank you so much. All right. Yeah, I'm only I'm only thinking about these are things we in the health department obviously would endorse when they are scientifically valid and true. Um, but I, I want to respect what's within the legislation, what's without, but knowing how our teams view the world, um, if we're talking about a warning label and there's some valid warning to be had, not just warning, uh, we'd want to make sure we were uh, calling attention to the uh, Ingrid, anything you would like to add? Yeah, I'm just going to add one more so I'm going to move to slide 18, Dr. Levine. This is a glass jar of cannabis flower, um, and it's sealed by the label. This is, of course, prepackaged, um, just so everyone knows. And while not to take us down a, a rabbit hole, but just one thing to notice on the second photo is that that UPC there will um, aid in track and trace and inventory. So I did just put a note over that. But it's very clear what it is. I don't, subjectively, all packages are subjective. Um, it tells you everything that you need to know about the package. Um, definitely doesn't seem to be something that would appear to kids in any capacity, uh, and it's very straightforward. What I understand about this package too is it has a pill bottle style top that does require a push down in order to open. Questions or comments, or may I move on? Okay, fantastic. We're on slide 19. This is also a glass jar of um, cannabis flower. And what is important on this particular um, jar is something that has been brought up is that there is a QR code on here. Um, so if you scan the QR code, um, or, or I was able to scan it with my own phone and it pulled up a website page just for this product. So once it pulled that up, it told me a lot more about the product and in um, a more readable visual. The reality is it's just an additional way of providing this information to the consumer um, in addition to what would be on 
the actual package itself. So can I just ask, it says Legacy Strings Ice Cream Cake. I'm just curious what that is. I think um, the best way I can I can compare this is that the name that was given to it by the cultivator, ice cream strain. Um, I've seen Oreos with a Z on the end. I've seen a few, um, I've seen Mimosa. Um, they have some very interesting names. So I think um, that is something that, you know, definitely would have to be taken into consideration for the guideline pieces, um, if, if you so choose to do so in the recommendations. All right, I'm going to move to Illinois. So um, we do have a little more context here for size in Illinois, and I think that um, may be helpful to everyone that this was just over seven inches before being opened. Um, their anatomy as well, they do have a warning label on there. This one was a little easier to read than some of the California stuff based on size. But um, one of the things that was, was duly noted is there were no serving or suggestions or instructions um, and no warning symbol. And all of those are in your statute, so they will need to be added and on there. Um, one of the things that I do think is important to note here is that this is the only package I saw like this that said this is a cannabis infused product and not a food in a small font. Um, right above the, the secondary statement that said this product was produced in a cannabis cultivation center not subject to public health inspection that may also process common food allergens. So in the state of Illinois, they are not um, they're made in cannabis cultivation. They don't consider them a food, so they don't put them under the same rules. That is one thing that will be a part of this subcommittee is um, talking about public health oversight of edibles so that everyone is aware. Are there any thoughts on this package or, you know, considerations? So let me just make sure I have it straight. It's called a rice marshmallow tree, and then somewhere in the font it says this is not a food. Yep. Got it. It does. And um, yes, that's exactly correct. Was a resealable package, um, but definitely, definitely worth worth a look. Um, one additional item. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Were you going to say something? I'll, I'll share an additional warning statement that um, I have seen you know, in Illinois as well and a couple of other areas. So if there's no additional comments, I'll move to the next slide. Okay. I noticed there's a tremendous amount of space on the front side and the back side that's blank. There is, absolutely. And um, when we get to warning symbols, Dr. Levine, uh, which will be today, I'll show you, uh, we mocked up what it would look like if we put the warnings on the front of the package, the warning symbols. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I'm struck by how much room there is yeah. uh, for that particular product. Others, of course, everything is crammed in, but, but this one is an exception. I do believe the size of the product is going to matter, the size of the packaging. Again, this, this was probably seven and a half inches, as you can see, to scale. Um, and that does help tremendously because it gives you more opportunity to put on the package what is needed. And for everyone um, in the room, what's important about this also is this package was not visible until it was purchased from a kiosk. And so it wasn't something that you could have just seen your, yourself until you actually said, I want to buy that. All the products were behind the counter. So I'm going to move on. This package um, is, uh, is six inches as well. It's a plain white package with the product being labeled on the front and then um, the items on the back. What I really liked about this particular package was it had a second warning label, and that said, this product contains cannabis and intoxication following use may be delayed by two or more hours. 
Um, so it, it, at least it, it does indicate that in a separate area, but it, it is small to read. Um, it also says it was produced in a facility that cultivates cannabis and may also process common food allergens. So there was a little bit of inconsistency between the first package and the second package. Um, again, no servings noted, no instructions, and no warning symbol. The other thing um, that is important here, I is not serving that it didn't know how many pieces were even in a package. Any thoughts? Curious use of the word intoxication too. Like, is that the goal of the product, or is that the unwanted effect of the product? Um, because obviously, people use cannabis to achieve many goals, and some are a frame of mind, but they probably don't look at it as, you know, if somebody was drinking a glass of wine, that gives them a pleasant feeling, but they don't consider themselves intoxicated from the one glass of wine generally. Um, so that's just weird to me. I don't know. I'm having trouble even understanding what their intent is with the word. It's especially, I think it's especially curious in that uh, so many cannabis advocates I've, I've run into really resist the idea that there's intoxication going on with cannabis. Right. You wouldn't think it would be the stated goal of the product, so then in that sense it might be a warning, but boy, it's challenging. Mm -hmm. but it, the law may require it. Yeah. It does give us the opportunity, though, as, as your subcommittee, to uh, help you see what you might not want, which is why this is, I think this is a good exercise. I hope that you're both finding it that way as well, just to see what others are doing. Um, very good. So I will tell you, this is a package that was recently purchased and just to get into the package was incredibly difficult. Um, resealing the package was not difficult, but opening the package again was. So, interesting thing I will note here is that they tell you exactly how to open it and then how to reseal it. So, Illinois does allow 100 milligrams of THC, but just to let everyone know. And then I'm going to move to another package from Illinois. Um, this was not boxed. This was, it, it, the one thing I would say about this is it resembled, in my opinion, um, a, a skincare cream or it could be any other type of salve until you read uh, the sour sativa gummies on there. So, but what, what I thought was important to share was what the product looked like in terms of colors inside. So it, it, it subjectively, I found it contradictory um, in a way, but uh, I, I wanted to showcase this. This also had a push down pill type top on it, pill prescription top in order to open it. Um, the warning was illegible and not just because it was small the print job was difficult to read uh, it was a little bit blurry um so i just wanted to share these pieces again they allow 10 milligrams each 100 milligrams of thc total so there were 10 in there thoughts and that's double the amount we allow in our correct team. correct uh, and you said the uh, amount per piece is not listed? The amount per piece was listed at 10 milligrams. No, actually it's not. It, it isn't listed. That was not something that I saw. I don't know if that's not required in Illinois, but that was the same issue here. Um, had no idea how many pieces were even in the package because it didn't say so. But presumably anything we labeled would have milligrams per service, so to speak, or piece. Correct. Correct. And the way that it's actually been written, it is five per piece maximum, um, with 50 per, 50 per package. So sure. Yeah, it does say, it does say on the uh, front of the front label. Oh, no, it does, it's 10 milligrams. Yeah. This one does. This one did not. Yeah, the previous one didn't. So we're learning. We're learning from other states' mistakes. So. Mm -hmm. 
So um, to wrap up Illinois, you know, you ordered via an iPad pad on a kiosk. It was a very transactional um, versus an experience. It was go in, pick, choose, go. Um, you know, and you made your payment, and then it was placed in a nondescript brown paper bag with handles, um, but was not sealed or stapled. And then from any questions on Illinois? Okay. And then from there, this is Michigan. Um, so what I wanted to point out with Michigan um, as well are, is the anatomy of their package. This one was a, a little more than um, six inches in total. So it had the number of pieces. One of the things that was very interesting on the product fact label, which is the white label, is that it had um, the THC per piece at 10.58 grams, just because I guess that's how it came out in, in their testing. Uh, it does have a sticker on the front that says that it is 10 pieces. Um, and then it had two different types of warning language on there. They did pull a call out box for pregnant or breastfeeding women and for um, pregnancy and what could occur. What is meant by full spectrum CO2? What does that say, CO2? I, I honestly, I do not know. Um, we could find out the answer, but I do not know. Okay. Any thoughts on the Michigan package? <clears throat> the only thought is that is the most thorough assessment of risk for pregnancy that I've seen thus far. It doesn't just say you shouldn't use it if you're pregnant. It says here's what could happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's um, built into our regulations or, or if that's an expanded version of that. I am unsure on uh, that, but we could certainly research it. What do you think, Ingrid? Does that appeal to you that they've made it very expansive? Yeah, it does appeal to me. I, um, you know, I, I'm going to always be of the persuasion of more information and facts based on science are better. Um, but yeah, and I think the, what is the child warning on this? They really um, only had keep out of reach of children in the second paragraph and it was not an all cap font. Mm -hmm. it, right up here in the warning language one. Oh, sorry, I, I moved away. Um, it's in that area. But when you see the mock-up of the warning symbols, um, which I only did for the front, you'll, I, we did put the not safe for kids on there and those are coming up. Mm -hmm. Interesting though that the uh, package says 10.58 uh, grams per piece. I've never uh, seen a, a limit like that. Uh, I wonder if that includes a sort of an allowed tolerance, you know, of plus or minus half a gram, milligram. My assumption would be yes on that, um, but we could certainly um, yeah, I'll check that out. Some information, and there will be tolerances in there, um, and that is something that will have to be taken into consideration. Um, any additional thoughts on this, Dr. Levine or Ingrid? No, I mean just to summarize that they they're calling out the pregnancy with the box and everything, yet. This is the product we're most scared about the kids using because it's the kind of stuff they eat all the time and it doesn't have the bolding or the capitalizing of the children part. So. Mm -hmm. Great. So this also comes back to, uh, this was legible. The label was harder to read just because of the printing on the, on the white label, but it was much more legible and I, again, it comes back to size and the size of the package. Um, this is this is flour again. It, it is a six a uh, six inch package, so it is cannabis. They um, did not put the pregnancy or breastfeeding warning on this package, which 
it's just it's just not there. Um, and then it even on this one, one of the things I found interesting because it is flour was please wait at least one hour for this product to take effect. Um, where I was thinking, and I could get an example where some say it takes effect immediately. And their warning symbol in Michigan really is more inviting than it is warning. I agree. It looks very much like a part of the graphic design in a way. So, and this one was black and white as opposed to green, where it was green on the, gum, the gummy. So from there, um, this is a package that contained one free roll, one free roll joint in it. And so it is a nondescript white package. The only thing it had on it was the um, printed label. Okay. So in the state of Michigan, um, the service was provided by what's known as a bud tender. Uh, you made payment in cash, it was placed in a white paper bag and stapled shut to prevent any open container issues. That's how they do it there. Any thoughts or considerations? And then we'll move to warning symbols. Okay. So, going back to um, the warning symbols, and there you'll see three different kinds here. These are, this is the Illinois package, and two Illinois packages and one from Michigan, dropping in the warning, the first warning symbol contains THC and not safe for kids. And in the guidelines, you know, our recommendation would be to have a minimum size for um, some of these warning symbols. And that is how Maine and Massachusetts do it as well. So this gives you an idea of what it would look like. These are not the back. They, they could also go on the back of the package, but this is the white with the red outline. Any thoughts? Um, again, I said this before, but I like red as a warning. Like the examples you gave us last week, I think there was yellow in those as well, correct? Yeah, this is the example from last week with the new. Okay. Danica, can I offer yeah. something also? Um, this is very similar to what both Maine and Massachusetts have, so it might be worth the subcommittee's consideration for you know what's familiar in New England. Um, you know, in terms of like a regional approach. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So if this is almost identical to what Maine and Massachusetts is using now, but with the exception of the leaf, the leaf is different. So this is the yellow symbol, just because we had had it up there, but also with the not safe for kids. And then I'll move to the yellow and red that also was requested. Um, my concern on this particular package or these particular warning symbols with both colors is in the event um, is that it might get lost if a package was yellow or red. I'm a fan of what's known as white knockout, which is like the first particular one because no matter what color the package is, that white is going to pop. Mm -hmm. and we'll be able to see it mm -hmm. and even this yellow symbol with a white box around it because I, I can't change it because of the way that it was brought in um, the white knockout on that does also give some um, some more distinction mm -hmm. and then there's the yellow and red Anything either of you gravitate more towards at this point that you would feel like you're in the more sure range? Uh, 
I'll just say that I like the the this or the yellow and red, obviously the best. Not that one, but that one or the first yeah. one. Okay. Okay. Dr. Levine, any thoughts? I knew she was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> she likes them both. So not the third, Avery. Um, so this one, this one. I don't like that one. I like that one with the yellow and red. Because okay. it pops and it's very clear that proceed with caution and, and awareness. And then, and I think that's the strongest. I think that's our strongest one. If it were on a yellow or red package, though, it would not be. So we may have to consider two variations. Well, show me the other one again that we're... I mean, those to me are... I'm good with either one of those. I, um, and I am defer... I, I think you make a good point that if the packaging was yellow, the other one would get lost. So, so am I hearing you like slide 31 the best and slide 29 second? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, can I also, I just want to make the point that when you put these three packages side to side that this first white one and the last one, the Sweet Life one, they, they sort of, they don't highlight in my brain sort of what a child might be drawn to, whereas the middle one that appears to be like pink to me and has this attractive watermelon um, font, word and font just seems like in and of itself it would be attractive to a child you know, in some ways, just because I think it lights up the brain because of its colors and its font style. But the other two seem like they could be like, I mean, the word goobies, I don't really like because I think it's childlike yeah, or, you know, it mm -hmm. makes no sense. And it is, you know, it's oriented toward a child who might know what that is. I don't know. But Sweet Life by Hannah seems fairly, um, like it's really not trying to appeal to kids in any roundabout way. Just, I'm just, I know I'm talking about packaging overall, not necessarily the words on the packages, but. I will also say one of the interesting things about the Sweet Life, that's the one that had the right, the rice marshmallow treat inside. It did not even say that on the outside though, what was in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It did not indicate that this is a rice marshmallow treat on the packet. Mm -hmm. I had to be told that. Yeah. But it does raise the issue of um, how much discretion we have in regulating how products are named. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we have these statute rules that say advertising can't appeal to kids, blah, blah, blah. Well, to me, Fruit Goobies, as you point out, appeals to kids. So you're not advertising, it's the name of the product. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we need to have some, I would hope, leverage in not allowing product names that are made for kids. Um, but again, the Sweet Life of Hannah may be a little more of an adult name the other thing I noticed, and maybe I should have noticed this like two or three meetings ago, the not for kids, not safe for kids uh, warning label is actually smaller in size than the triangle contains THC, but there's more to digest in the warning label for the kids because there's so many more words. Um, so I would opt for Especially if you look at the middle package, uh, you can really see the stark difference. And the and the and the fact is, to read those words but best and have them really stare the consumer in the face, a little larger than for the not safe for kids. So it's much more 
evident that it's a real warning. That's an excellent point. I will point out to the subcommittee members that um, in the guidelines for Maine, and, and I believe Massachusetts may have the same guideline because they're sharing the symbol, the not safe for kids is, is an optional piece and they have a minimum size. I think it's like half an inch. I would have to, to go back and look it up, but I do believe in the guidelines, you know, part of your recommendations absolutely should, should say that, that you want potentially warning symbol parity inside. Um, and I think that's very a, a very good point. Okay, so we are at 10 for the hour. There are a few additional items, but um, Julie, do we have any members of the public that would like to make comments? We do have a couple of uh, members of the public to make comment, but just before we move to that, I wonder, since we have sort of a top two uh, favorites in the symbols, uh, Dr. Levine, mm -hmm. I know you wanted to run those by some folks in your office. I wonder if you could take those two slides um, between you know now and our next meeting and share that. I, know that they're very busy with other things, but if we could start that process, I think that would be really helpful. Uh, yeah, I'd really like to do that, but I'd, I'd almost like to take them a package. Okay. Uh, I don't mean package like a, um, gummies, but a, uh, a package of everything that we've kind of gone through to this point, you know, even with some of the content of the warning language, not just the labels. Um, but I, I, I'd have to select from so many slide sets at this point, so I don't know if Danica could help me with that. I sure could, absolutely. Whatever you would, you know, whatever you'd like to put forth, I can make that happen and reduce the size. Okay, that would be great. Absolutely. No, no problem at all. The goal today was to give you a comprehensive look at packages in other states, and I hope we achieved that goal for you. Um, again, this is something you've heard me say, I like to give people something to react to. Um, you may not know what you want, but you often might find what you don't want or what you do need when you see something. So um, if everyone on the committee is okay with this, Dr. Lillian, I'll get you whatever you need and however you want it. Um, but if we could take the public comments and then if we have the opportunity, any additional wrap up we may have, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that there's more visibility for everyone. Okay. Public comments? Hi. Hi. Good morning. I think it's still morning for a couple more minutes. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Ben Mervis. I spoke to you last week. Um, glad to be with you again. Thank you for the time and your work on all of this. Um, so I did mention last week I started out in public health, so I just want to preface this is coming from a public health standpoint, but also product manufacturing, which I've worked in, and retail, uh, both merchandising and a relationship with consumers. Um, I would suggest looking at the logo from slide 31 with the yellow on the yellow packaging that's being discussed, because I absolutely do agree from all three of those experiences the yellow could get very lost, um, where that white does pop. Um, Danica, I'm not sure what, what word you used, but it, that was absolutely spot on. Um, so I just recommend Thanks. to the subcommittee that you look at those two with the yellow background, because um, I do think it'll make a huge difference for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's called a white knockout, just in case anybody wants to know. So you can actually see it. That's how the yellow pages used to do it. Hi, uh, yeah, this is uh, Dave Silverman from Middlebury. Um, just a quick hit. Um, there is going to be, uh, there is an interest out there um, for uh, the production of fresh edible products. So uh, think uh, like uh, mini cupcakes or little cookies or things that are not really intended for long-term storage. Uh, so as you're thinking about requirements for like packaging and resealability, uh, you know, I, I, I want to make sure that you don't accidentally preclude those products or over-regulate those products uh, beyond what's necessary because those products kind of are in, intentionally won't need resealability, for example, uh, because they're really, you know, sold one, as one-off, consumed that day sort of, sort of thing. Um, and, you know, might be sold at the point of sale, unboxed altogether, uh, displayed in an unboxed form, and then boxed. Uh, and it could be boxed at the point of sale, 
in a uh, you know otherwise compliant uh, packaging that is opaque and uh, child resistant. Um, secondly, I, I just uh, hearing the conversation today, I, I just want to raise the concern with overwarning on a package uh, and, and remind you that you also have an informational flyer that you're going to give people. And I think you know there's a tendency to throw a lot of label labels on things, warning labels on things. I think of when my children were small and how their playpen or their crib had you know 87 warning labels, and the net result of that is that nobody looks at any of them. Um, and so you don't want to overwarn to the point where people are just ignoring the warnings. And I would urge you to really focus on what what are, what are the most important warnings to give consumers immediately at the point of sale on the product as opposed to something that they could have on an informational flyer later on. And, and so, you know, from my experience, uh, I, I would say that um, most important are, are two things. Uh, one is clear identification uh, that this is a product that contains THC. So those uh, two uh, little bugs that you would put on, I think are great, and you make those big, and you make those really stand out, that's key. And that you put it on the front, not just on the back, right? Contains THC, keep out of reach of kids. That's important. Um, and delayed onset is very important with edible products. Uh, because people who might have experience, uh, you know, from a long time ago, uh, from smoking flour, know that that hits you right away, but an edible can take maybe 45 minutes, maybe a couple of hours, depending on your uh, digestive system. Um, and, and so warning them of the delayed onset of the effects, I think is gonna be very, very important to avoid seeing what we've seen in other states where people consume an edible, don't think it worked, consume another edible, end up having two, three, four servings, much more than they can handle, and then end up in the ER with a freak out. Uh, that's not what we want. Uh, and so I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Okay, great. I think that's it, Danica, for public comment today. Great, thank you so much. So Dr. Levine, um, I will certainly reach out to you via email and um, or, or however you choose, we can, I can call you, we can have a conversation and I'll get you exactly what you need. Yeah, thanks. Um, Very good. Um, are there any additional comments? We'll pick this back up, but what I would like to say um, to the subcommittee is if there are considerations based on this, we would really love to know for each of the types of products it, on Thursday, if, you, if there were any types of package styles that you definitely gravitate towards um, from the examples that were presented here today, along with um, the warning statement. And I did take the liberty of creating an additional uh, warning statement that we can go over, but you can read um, before that on slide. Give me one moment. And this will, of course, be uploaded for anyone that is here um, on slide uh, 32 and 33. There are some recommendations, but um, I think one of the most important things to take away uh, when looking at what recommendation language would be, would be to take into consideration the amount of space that you have in order for these to be clear and legible um, and the importance piece. So with that being said, thank you for the public comments today. They're greatly appreciated. Um, we thank you for being here. And um, if, there, if there's nothing else, we can um, close the meeting out. Anyone? Okay, Mark, take it away. Thanks. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Make that motion. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, Levine, you want to second that? <laughs> second. Okay. Okay. Thank you everyone for your participation today. It's greatly appreciated. We hope this was helpful and educational as we start hammering out some of these items, which is why I think it's incredibly important last to note that the warning, the warning language will help us drive everything else as well.
including the guidelines. So thank you so much, everyone. Have a very wonderful day. Thank you.